Erica, unbelievable day in court that yeah. we saw. So let's talk about that. Uh, Bernarda, how does this happen? I mean, Alex Jones called it a Perry Mason moment. It sort of was. Oh, absolutely. I thought I was on the show of being punked because of the surprise of where it came out. But his attorney should have known, like, look, you were already given a heads up that the plaintiff's attorney has these text messages, has these emails. So do you not have a conversation with Alec Jones and be like, by the way, they have your information. They know what you've said in the past. So stay consistent with that. But that was the best moment of the trial. It's like because he wasn't ready for it and you saw the true Alex Jones and it was a hubba, 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 hubba movement. <laughs> really was. <laughs> a hubba 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 moment. Is that a legal <laughs> term? Um, look, Oliver, here's what kind of stuns and troubles me. Yeah. In some ways, this is the culmination of the post-truth moment we live in, in terms of accountability. Sure. Right? We live at a time where basically people can get rich off of amplifying lies. And the only time they seem to be held to account is if they're under oath or if there's financial damages potentially involved. Yeah. What has struck me in watching this trial is how out of his element Jones is, right? He is used to being able to rant, to rave, to push conspiracy theories on his show unchallenged. And in court, he's learning that's not the way this works. You know, he has to sit in silence as the judge admonishes him. He can't rebut the Sandy Hook mother who is telling him about how his lies have caused her pain and suffering over many years. And even when he is able to talk, he's being fact-checked in real time. And so his mm -hmm. arguments fall apart. So that has been very interesting to watch uh, Alex Jones' uh, you know, narrative doesn't really quite hold up when it's just confronted with a little bit of reality. He's BSing his way through this, and the Frank. judge called him very frankly on that. In this moment, we see him trying to say, well, okay, so you have my text messages. What's the big deal as he sort of tries to cover for it? But, Paul, maybe you can explain some of the legal jeopardy that he or his attorneys may be in, because his attorneys knew that he did have text messages about Sandy Hook. He, when deposed, says he doesn't. They have possession of them. Then they seem to be aware that they've accidentally given them to the prosecution. They don't alert their client. There's so many problems with this. This is a colossal error by the defense attorneys. Now, what they're going to say is that we had thousands of documents in this case, and this just slipped through, and we didn't really know that those text messages were in the pile of documents that were turned over to Jones's attorneys. That's what the attorneys are going to say, because otherwise the attorneys are guilty of subornation of perjury. If you put a witness on the stand knowing that that witness is going to commit perjury, you, you share his guilt in that crime. So the attorneys could be in big trouble. So their defense is going to be, well, it was a mistake. With respect to Jones, He's now looking at a potential $150 million verdict, which may destroy him economically, but he's also looking at potential indictment in Texas for aggravated perjury, which has a penalty of two to 10 years in prison. So the stakes have gotten very, very big in a case that was already a, a huge uh, defamation case, maybe one of the biggest defamation cases in U.S. history. Erica, one of the most surreal moments was when um, he got called out for ranting against the judge, yeah. in effect, <laughs> yeah. on, on air and denied it in court. I think we've got that clip again. You say, Mr. Jones, that you're taking these court proceedings seriously. You're approaching them in good faith. But the truth of the matter is, you've been broadcasting repeatedly a picture of our judge on fire. I would change. Objection compound, Your Honor? No. The person on the left of this image is our judge, correct? Yes. The person on the right is another judge you don't like, right? Yes. Okay. I mean, that's real-time fact-checking, but yep. that's also uh, somewhere between sick and absurd. But this has been happening throughout, right? And Oliver has been watching this really closely. That So remember, we were talking yesterday about when the parents, Neil Heslin and Scarlett Lewis, were addressing him. He wasn't there in court in the morning because he was doing his show. And, and, you know, railing on them then has been continually hitting a lot of this while all of these proceedings are happening. Bringing up the judge, as you noted, also railing on the jurors, yeah. uh, a little pushback from the jurors, too, calling them blue collar, basically trying to make, trying to use terms and trying to make the case that they're not smart enough to make a sound decision in this case when it comes to damages. It is remarkable just how open and transparent he has been in that respect. And yet, as you point out on the stand, being fact-checked in real time, no, no, that's not her. Yes, it is her. The Sandy Hook lawyer 
on hot mic says, you know, the thing, or I'm paraphrasing, the thing people haven't thought about yet is what happens when these messages, when law enforcement get these, gets these messages. Mm. Two years on his cell phone takes us well before the insurrection. And he was there on that day in Washington. Are you expecting that the committee, Paul, is going to want to get their hands on these text messages? Absolutely, they will. They're, they're going to look to see if he was involved in actually planning the takeover of the Capitol on January 6th. And of course, you know that he's so crazy in what he says on the air, his text messages probably reflect that as well. So um, I, this is going to be probably a big thing for the committee. Also, was there any contact with uh, the former president by Jones? Jones had interviewed the president and uh, had contacts with him at some point in time. Mm -hmm. They'll be looking into that as well when they get these text messages. We're not a final word. <laughs> Look, yesterday's price is not today's price. After Alex Jones testified, the jury now has a different mindset as to how much money should they award. So all I'm thinking is money, money, money that they're going to get closer to what they're asking for. Exactly, and the punitive damages are going to be out, off the roof. And I'm thinking of jail, 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 because that's where <laughs> this guy deserves to go for lying in court about and telling these horrible lies about these 20 dead children and six mm -hmm. of their adult teachers yeah. who died in this horrible, horrible incident. I'm thinking truth, truth, truth. How about that? It's okay. horrific, the pain that he's caused. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you guys, thank you so much Thanks, for that guys. conversation. We do really appreciate it.